The Body, Mind, and Spirit with Dr. Maya Stone. Stay inspired. As a fellow life liver and music lover, could you please share what role music plays in your life? Yeah, it's a huge question, and music has been huge for me my entire life. It's been um, extremely important, you know, throughout, like, my everyday living, um, and it's because it's been connected to my um, faith, you know, like, in a, an extremely strong way. So, um, you know, as a as a Christian and in the black church um, and growing up singing a ton of like gospel music and, um, and, you know, in choirs and as a, you know, it's solo sometimes and in congregations. Um, it's been a huge part of the, the power, you know, that, um, that I felt spiritually in my life, which is, affected my both my mind and my body you know like in, in an interesting way um but so it's been um hugely important so and in the, in the terms of affecting my body it's um affected um you know movements how i move you know when i'm when i'm worshiping you know during my faith and um and also um just every day, like if I'm listening to music, I'm moving to the music in some way, but I'm not moving externally, I'm moving internally, which I, which I feel like is affecting my mind, you know? Um, so it's like how, you know, this is interesting that we're talking about mind, body, spirit, and that, that question is like, you know, it's so all inclusive um, that it's had such a, a powerful effect um, on my life and in that way. So in every way. So, um, so yeah, so, the, so music has been an integral part of my life and throughout my life, it's like developed over time, of course, because now I'm doing it, you know, for a career. So, <laughs> so in that way, um, you know, things have changed a bit, but, um, it still has the same like powerful effect, you know, in my life. It's very interesting. How does the body and music go together? Uh, it's, it, it's kind of magical, you know. When music moves through time, it's, you know, we, fig we figured out a way to notate it and to, you know, to put like a beginning and an end, you know, to it. But there's something really interesting about the fact that once it starts, it doesn't you know, like it's moving, like constantly. Once it begins, it's going. If we stop it, we f we feel that. You know, like and even if you're not a musician, or you know, if you're if you're listening, you have a sense of almost like brokenness. You know, that happens in that moment, and um, that's a part of you know we're we're connected to that. We're connected to the universe in that way. And I feel like our body, you know, is also connected in that way, you know? So if, you know, the music is playing, I mean, some people don't move to music, you know, and it's, you know, it's not their thing. I think that's totally fine. I feel like probably we're all feeling something, you know, internally, you know? So, um, I mean, there are so many different ways that, like, we can connect to music when, with our bodies, right? It's like even, you know, if we're at the doctor or the dentist or something like that, like, the dentist might play music and you might opt for music instead of uh, an anesthesia or, you know, like something to numb pain. Um, and so in that way, you know, like it's a mind body connection. So, um, and it, it's so interesting. It's all interconnected, right? It's like, it's impossible to, to, um, to, uh, disband it. But, um, yeah, so it's, I mean, when I, when I hear music, like I want to move, 
like and even if it's if it's something that's um like rhythmically based you know I really want to move if it's something that's not necessarily rhythmically based maybe it's more melodically based you know then I, I want to move you know with it um in some way sometimes I hold myself back and I wonder you know like how that's affecting you know us if we're holding ourselves back if we feel something and we don't respond to it you know with our bodies so i think it's it's good you know to to you know engage and it's very it can be very powerful in our experience with the music you know that's happening that's occurring if we allow it richard's asked have you had any eurythmic classes no, that's really interesting. Doing everyday tasks like children sharing um, a ball in a circle, but yes. it's but it's paralleled with um, beating of a drum, or so they're naturally learning rhythm without even thinking about it. Another one is Orf Schoolwork. Yeah, I had that growing up, and um, the Eurythmics um, sounds awesome and we did we did orf growing up we were an orf based you know like i guess um music you know education uh program and um and i did that also in in undergrad you know as a um but not a ton but we we studied a little bit of orf um but it's funny because all of the things that you're talking about and you and you may have had that this experience too julie but all of those things were things that i experienced in the church you know, like very much so, um, you know, like how, how we would move and how we would, and, and uh, respond to music and collectively, you know, as a group. And sometimes, um, especially if it was like a, like a rehearsal type of thing, but also, you know, with young groups, um, like, um, like young Sunday school or like vacation Bible school or something like that, you know, <laughs> we would, um, we would be doing things where we're passing off, you know, like, um, roles, um, uh, musical roles within, within the choir or within the group of people. So that's so interesting to me, like that, um, a lot of the things that, you know, were, were learned in, in, um, school, as far as music is concerned, were also learned in, um, um, church <laughs> or yeah <laughs> for me for me <laughs> but um but yeah it's so interesting right like and also in a way that like we you know it wasn't really until later that I was like I really like got a pretty strong foundation you know what I mean like with music and and rhythm and stuff like that through my church experience but at the time, you're not really totally thinking about that, I don't think. I think you're just thinking, oh, I'm going to church. But there's a lot, like, happening. There's a lot going on. Joey has mentioned Cincinnati offered this, too. Hi, Maya. Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm, uh, I'm, I've met you, like, once or twice. I'm, I'm Patrick Murphy's colleague in the Reed Quintet that he's in. And I believe oh, you guys yes. go way back to, like, upstate. Or something. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. So I just wanted to try to make that dot connect. Yeah, it's uh, totally connected. Thank you. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Sure. Please tell us about it. Yeah, and it's really good to see Dick and Martin and everybody up there. Hey guys, um, I was I was driving with you so hard when you were talking about movement mm -hmm. during performing, and it's um, frankly like the brain works hard enough to conquer all. And, and if you're saying like an artist is restricting movement. It's like heartbreaking, you know. <laughs> I think any player, even if their their rear is in the chair, they can like do something, you know. Right. And that's like value add on a performance, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, once in a while, it can go too far, but if yeah. it's sold just right, it, boy, is it. Uh, it's just better. Yeah. So anyway, I wanted to resonate with you. I really, I, I'm with you in the same boat. How does the mind and music go together in life? It's all connected. Like, I just can't get away from that, you know, that every single thing. Oh, my gosh. Um, so, like, as things come up through life, you know what I mean, in general, and struggles come up and, um, you know, struggling with the career and, you know, and 
things that happen, you know, throughout your career and, you know, like moments, like in, in general, the career in general, and then specific moments, you know what I mean? Um, and how we react to that. And sometimes it's like the, it's sometimes it's specifically concerning the career. And sometimes it's like life stuff, you know, like where, I mean, this, where it could happen to literally anybody, you know what I mean? And, um, and how we respond in that moment and what types of tapes we create, you know, for ourselves that, you know, start to run because, um, you know, it, it's been, been said that, um, it's like 80, 80% 80 of what we, you know, s s goes on in our thinking every single day of our lives is like the same so like every day so you know it's like if we get ourselves in a in a rut or something then and i say a rut you know but sometimes it's a, it's unidentifiable you know so we might be there and not not re necessarily realize it but um but we can um all of a sudden start to you know kind of create potentially negative you know tapes and things that um are you know playing over and over again um for us and and affecting us every day you know and and then in terms of every day like um every month every every year every decade you know uh if we don't <clears throat> kind of get a handle on it so um so i to me it's important to like have positive tapes running you know in our heads and and um and sometimes that means like completely reconstructing them you know um and because we may have gotten in a place where um they're they're not you know they're really not positive um so to me that's that's important you know in the in the kind of overall general you know um thing um and then also um in terms of you know th that's that's one aspect of the mind in general you know and then as far as music is concerned and i'll kind of jump forward and then we can jump back and talk about you know like other stuff if you want to but um but yeah, music and preparation. So that general thing kind of, you know, right, lends itself to like the preparation of, of music and then like where we are when we're performing. And, um, and um, it's really interesting too, like the, that the whole pandemic came, you know, when the whole pandemic came about. And I can't remember if we had talked about this before, Julie, but, um, like I totally did not expect realizations that came out of the pandemic to come. And originally, um, you know, of course the pandemic has been, you know, just awful. And like so many people have been, you know, affected by death and illness and, you know, um, beyond the, the, uh, health pandemic, you know, there's the, the race pandemic, which has affected also, you know, health as well. But, um, but so beyond that, though, like this experience, um, part of what uh, I've learned a ton from it, you know, um, just a just absolute ton, you know, and just um, kind of like um, swallowing up the moments, you know, for you know, as it, as it happens, as it occur, as it's occurring and allowing myself to be open, you know, to, um, to realizations and, um, just, uh, interesting revelations. And, um, one thing that was so fascinating to me, like incredibly fascinating, um, was I hadn't played, you know, in an ensemble with anyone for, ever you know for like the longest time i mean that's such an exaggeration but <laughs> it was a long time right it was a really long time and um it was like you know the end of march 2020 to like um what was that 
it was like November, you know, and, or Oct October, November, and, uh, it was November, and, um, and the first thing I did was just with, like, ten people, maybe, in the room, maybe, ten, maybe eight or something, but when I sat down to play, <clears throat> when I walked in, all of a sudden, this, like, cloud came over me, and, like, like a dark cloud, and I sat down, <laughs> and I, yeah, I sat down to play, and all of a sudden, I was like, Ugh. you know, and I was like, oh my gosh, what is happening, and, you know, like, I recognized it in the moment, and thought, and, and thought, shut this off, you know, turn this off, what is this, this is, what, what's going on here, you know, yeah, and I couldn't shut it off. I couldn't turn it off. And that was like a huge revelation. I was like, oh my gosh. Like I've just been, you know, going from one gig, you know, to the next. Yeah. Carrying this baggage and not realizing it's really like, I think I, some part of me knew, you know, but I wasn't really like, I was just plowing through, you know, and I wasn't being attentive to it and I wasn't addressing it, you know, and I was like, in that moment, I was like, I cannot believe that this is what I was carrying with myself because I had been away from it for a while. And, um, and so I mental note, you know, <laughs> like, okay, let's address this. Let's, you know, take stock and move forward and um and then the next time I was able to shut it off but so it's something though that I've had to like be very conscientious about you know and like and work through and you know speaking of the mind part like meditating is really important to me you know and I don't do it every single day but um but I do do it often and then when I notice, you know, myself kind of getting spaced or um, on unfocused, particularly unfocused on what it is I want to focus on, you know, or or if I'm like waking up in the morning and going like directly to my phone, you know what I mean, or something like that, which you know as it happens, um, then I'm like, all right, it's time to, you know, all right, come back, let's let's make a make a point to to meditate you know and nothing else gets in the way of that period you know and that's just yeah hugely important to me joey yeah um <laughs> what what is the cloud did you did you put a label on it other than it was <laughs> undesirable and that you wanted you know yeah did you, de did you decide the a word or some other <laughs> some other <laughs> aspect you know, of your emotional yeah. state was taking yeah. place. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's A, anxiety. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah totally. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, I'll talk about it because, um, yeah, it's for me, it's like this feeling of, um, like, of not being, like, ready and, um, and, like not being not it's kind of not being good enough but it's like like not sounding good like nothing is good enough not sounding good enough in the moment and um and then like even though it's like <clears throat> I, you know in that particular gig I wasn't like hugely prepared but I wasn't unprepared you know and so and just also allowing myself to be what I am in the moment, whatever it is that I am in the moment without being hard on myself, you know, and um, because that's not going to be any good for me, you know, and or anybody really, you know, so, um, so or the, you know, the, the ensemble. So it's just basically like, and, and then like, you know, I, I put like a lot of stress in my, in my body, you know? So it's like, not just, it's not just in my mind, but what's happening in my mind translates to my body, which happens, right? That's, that's all part yeah. of it. Yeah. 
So, um, so not allow, so allowing myself to be okay with what I am in the moment and, um, and that that's good enough in, in, in that moment. And then also, um, when that happens, the, the, that transfers to, to the relaxation and the, and the, um, resting and peace of, in my body. Yeah. So no, it's total. it's 100% anxiety. 100%. Yeah. So you said it went away the next time. Is it gone now? You know, have you had a chance to go back out to play? Yeah. A bit more since that time? Cause that was several yeah. months ago now, right? So yes. Like, yeah. Right. So, so, um, it, the next time, so we, was it, I think that, yes, that next, the next gig that I played, I was actually like a backup. So, um, because, you know, in case somebody got COVID, so I was able to reflect on what had happened and then actually watch rehearsals and, you know, performances of others, you know, which I, I actually think is very helpful, can be very helpful. And, um, and then, so the next time, um, when I played, I, I was again, conscious of that. And then, um, and it was definitely a like, all right. This is what's ha this is what's probably or potentially going to happen, and I know I'm prepared for that. And you know I'm going into this and understanding again that I'm good enough and that you know I'm prepared and you know it's going to be fine. You know if something happens, I make a mistake in rehearsal or something. That's not the end of the world. Life goes on. You know, <laughs> like it's okay. Um, and it was and it was fine that moment was fine now i have felt that i'm not gonna say i haven't i've i have felt it coming up you know like or um in in other things that i've done but um and there have been a few moments where it's like i'm having to take stock again and but i think it's okay i think that's part of what happens i think sometimes especially when it was something that i was caring so much of you know all the time so there's gonna be some of that give and take but it's making sure that i'm conscious of it and always like adjusting and always you know aware and and um aware that i can adjust and again reminding myself that i'm good enough and re um working the tapes you know, so, um, but it's really interesting. And I think sometimes some, some people learn this, you know, early, early on. And, and, um, you know, I, I just didn't, but, <laughs> but, um, you know, even like when, when you're corresponding with people about something and, you know, like I, I had something come up where I was like talking to someone about stuff that I really didn't, you know, I was, it was like all tech stuff, techie stuff. And I was like, I am clueless, you know, <laughs> but, but I'm not completely, but you know, a lot. <laughs> and, and, um, and I had to be like, you know, that's okay. You know, like, and, and this is part of the process and this is why we're having this meeting. This is why we're working through this. And, and there's nothing that I have to apologize for because I'm, you know, not at that level yet, you know? So, um, so it's like, to me, it's like stuff like that, you know what I mean? Like just allowing myself to be like who I am and what I am and that's the, and that that's good enough. Yeah. The other person is the expert in the thing that you're trying to get their help in. So like, right. Okay. I'm, I'm, I sit in that, that seat a lot. My yeah. life. Uh, so if I have to be creative, my, my solution is to be creative with the end result. And, and make sure the expert understands from as much as what I'm conveying as I can try to convey. Right. And then usually we get somewhere, you, you know, usually yeah. sometimes somebody else has to come to the table, like to yeah. illustrate further or, or whatever. But right. I, I, I run into that. I, I know what you mean. Yeah. It's, I don't feel bad about it. That like you're sitting at, at the table, like that's not your job. Right. So don't worry about it. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Hit me up anytime. I'll encourage the world. <laughs> Fantastic. How does the spirit and music go together in life? The spirit, I think, is like so much more 
is is even more connected than anything else. But again, it's like one big like trifecta, right? You know, or something. It's like mind, body, spirit. So you just can't get away from one from the other. But um, the spirit, I think, it music, I think, totally is spiritual because it comes from this other space it comes from this other world you know it's like it's such a i mean we we always say like music is universal um and i i think in some ways it is you know in a lot of ways it is but it's like so much more than that you know it's like almost ethereal um but you know so the spirit and and music I think go hand in hand. The music has the power to like affect the spirit, you know, and, um, and vice versa, you know? And so I feel like, again, cause I can't get away from this, like all of them connect being connected to each other. I feel like the more we allow the spirit, whatever that is for whoever, you know, to like, come in um and and the more we allow our spirit to be open you know um the more we can be effective you know i feel like the more i can be effective as a musician you know if my spirit is open and connected to my body and connected to my mind. I says connected to my mind and that's connected to my body, you know? So then like I can release that, you know, the 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 music really more effectively. Um if if I allow that trans trans those transitions to, to occur and those connections to occur. And I think vice versa. I think the music that we experience can be so much more effective to us um, if we open ourselves. And, you know, what order that is, I'm not sure. Like, so maybe it could be, I think potentially, it could go in any order, I think. I think it could go body, mind, spirit. Uh, I think it could go spirit, mind, body. I think it could go spirit, body. I think it could go mind, spirit, you know, I mean, um, body, spirit, you know, um, I think it could go mind, body, you know, I mean, there's, it's, it's just so, there's so much potential there. Um, so I think really my job and what I want to do is, is be as open as I can possibly be to whatever, you know, order that's going to be and whatever effect can actually take place um, because there are so many possibilities. But again, like going back to the meditation, like that's, you know, in order for me to really try to get everything else out of the way and to get all of my, my thoughts and myself and, you know, like my, my concerns with myself, like, you know, get it, you know, past it, you know, like move those blocks out, then, um, the more I can allow those things to happen, give and take, uh, from music to spirit, spirit to music. Um, but I have to, um, I have to be able to see that for, I have to be able to be open to that first. So I have to have to get those things that are blockages, blockages out of the way, you know, blocks out of the way. And, um, and so meditation for me is huge in that way. Like it's, but it's connected to the mind and the spirit, you know, um, and the body, <laughs> right? I talk about it. And, um, so also, you know, um, as a, as a Christian, you know, as a, as a faith, uh, as a believer, um, in something, you know, like worshiping is very powerful to me you know, and, um, that's connecting my spirit to m my, uh, my, um, God. So, um, like music in worship service 
its main function is to do that, you know? So, um, like, it's a very powerful thing that can occur and, um, very, you know, it's very strong. Um, prayer also, which is kind of like a meditation, you know, um, that's also, um, very powerful. And, um, also for me, like Bible, like, and study and spiritual or spiritual book studying, you know, is, is very powerful that way. And that all in turn, like, that's not directly related to music, but it affects, you know, how I relate to music and how my spirit responds to music. And sometimes it's, um, like worship music, sometimes it's Christian music, but not always, you know, um, the, the way that I'm, um, responding to music and the way that I'm giving music, uh, in general is a result of that, you know, it's a result of that, uh, experience in some part, you know, in some way. So, um, like my connection to God, you know, and how I choose to connect to God, you know, and, and in, in my case, Jesus, you know, so, um, so, and, but everybody's different. And as I feel like what, however, you know, it would work for who you, who you, you know, however it would work for whoever it, that you should, you know, latch on to that and, and use that because it can be extremely, extremely powerful. How does the bassoon and music go together in life for you? I've wondered that same question. <laughs> it's, it's really my, it's my chosen voice. And, and maybe it's not necessarily, wasn't necessarily chosen, you know, to a certain extent. It, maybe it kind of chose me a little bit, you know? Um, but music and bassoon are, you know, um, I feel like I can't have, well, no, that's not true. I was going to say, feel, say, I feel like I can't have one without the other. I mean, the bassoon was constructed for music, right? <laughs> so for sure, like I need, you know, music, you know, if I'm going to play the bassoon, I need music. <laughs> but, um, but music for me is, um, you know, I've, I've sung all my life and I've played lots of other instruments and, um, I've danced a lot, you know, so, um, so music is not necessarily about, um, the bassoon, but it's like one of, one of my voices, you know, one of my musical voices. And, um, for me, it's like, if I'm, once I'm connected to the bassoon, like I, I, we are one and the same, you know, I am, I am the bassoon, the bassoon is me. So like, um, and I feel kind of that way about any wind instrument and particularly about a wind instrument that, um, I've s spent a lot of time, you know, like, um, getting to know and, and trying to, to be proficient at, you know, um, so I feel like I've spent so much time with it that I hope that when I put my mouth on it, like, I, I'm becoming a part of it. I don't really feel like, you know, like, I feel like if an individual is playing an instrument, like it's can't really exist without them, you know, or without someone, you know, a human being being attached. So automatically, you know, you are the instrument. I was going to share one final question from Joey. What has been your most engaging bassoon related pastime the past 12 months? I would say bassoon related pastime. I'm going to say, because I'm going to, I'm going to not choose like a career, you know, like a career related thing. But, um, so something that I started doing and this is kind of, I've done it before, I, I think, but, um, specifically during the pandemic, I was like, 
I just want to do, you know, I was like a point, there was a point where I was like practicing, practicing, practicing. And I was like, go, go, go. I was like, yeah, I'm a bassoon playing machine. You know what I mean? And then there was a point where I was like, uh, you know, <laughs> like, I'm not doing this, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I went through like shifts and, and, um, and then there was a, a time where I was like, okay, I want to get more creative. You know, I was just trying to find ways, you know, to make it interesting and like to keep you know like something to focus on and stuff like that and um and so one of the things recently was like I don't know if you guys have ever done this before but playing with uh like movies soundtracks so I really like to watch movies I like tv a lot you know, like a lot. I like watching actors and, you know, like subtleties and stuff like that. But there was one point where I was like watching something and I was like, Ooh, I bet, I bet that would be so cool. Like it was like this low, like action, you know, movie stuff. And it's like all low, like brass and stuff. I was like, this would be so fun to play with. And, um, I play a lot of second bassoon, you know, and sometimes I'm playing with like this really strong low brass you know behind me and I'm like I love you know that sound when you play with the, with them um it's like so many overtones and so I I like started playing with these sound checks and um and I was like this is really fun and then like I'll get in this zone where like I I like really 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 like a movie so I'm like, so there's this, I'll tell you about a movie actually that I really like, and um, it's called The Photograph. It's with Issa Rae, and um, I can't think of the, the male actor's name, but... Um, Kunal Nanjiani? No, the, but... Um, that other movie was cute. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that was cute. That was super <laughs> cute. <laughs> this, is this, this is the, like dramatic version this is the serious version okay the, yeah that was like the comic version like uh, romance and then this is like the serious romance but um but yeah i like that one too but this one the photograph like the soundtrack is all like like jazz like you know it's it's really cool and but you can totally so i think it's cool to like for me it's really fun to like blend in because you know they're like the soundtrack's gonna be at a440 you know like more than likely, you know, and, um, and then, you know, there'll be a mixture of stuff. You can, um, you can practice improvisation, you can practice, you know, like ear training and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, so that's my thing right now. That's my, th that's my bassoon related pastime, my favorite bassoon related pastime. <laughs> Great yeah. example. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Bye. glad you like it. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for asking. It was hard. <laughs> Richard, this is a great question. What is the origin of the traditional little dance following the last performance of the Nutcracker? So one day, um, you know, we were doing a Nutcracker and, um, and I'm trying to, so, oh, so actually Kika Wright. Do you know Kika Wright? Kika, yeah, she's so awesome. So she had posted this leaving work video, you know, this like blurb video, and it looks like kind of like an an Earth, Wind, and Fire band, you know. But they're like the music is like dun 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 da 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 dun 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 da 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 dun dun, you know. And they're leaving like this corporate building, and they all have on ties and like you know just and and suits and like newspapers and um, briefcases, you know, really nice shoes. And they're but they're all like jamming like do 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 do, do walking out, you know. And um and they and uh, I think the caption is like this is how we leave work. And she like posted that like and and either she she either tagged me or I saw it or I, you know something and I was like oh my gosh I love this you know and so we do Nutcracker right and it's so long 
And, you know, I love the Nutcracker. I can't get enough of it. It's great. I love playing the Nutcracker. It's so fun. But, you know, everybody's super tired at the end and everything. And, and you know, we're just like, oh, eight, you know, like eight shows, you know, 16 shows, 30 shows or whatever. <laughs> and at the end of the night, you know, like the, the last show, it's like kind of sad, but everybody's tired. And I was like, we need to do like something to like commemorate this. Like, you know, because it's like only happens one one time a year we're all in the pit for like hours at a time it's like we become like this big family or whatever and um and so um i got my friend joe lee who was conducting who conducts the nutcracker in in huntsville and he's also a bassoonist so and he's like you know we've done karaoke together he, he sings he lo you know he loves doing stuff like that and um and i i, I was like we should do this thing. you know i'm thinking about doing this thing what do you think and he was like yeah <laughs> he was like yeah let's do it i'm totally on board so um so we already had the song you know that was the song that year because it was like okay we're leaving work you know like leaving the nutcracker leaving work and um yeah so we got a friend to like film it and like you know he's filming with one camera and then playing the track on on another on uh on another phone <laughs> and we like you know mapped it out it's not a lot of choreography or anything like that just a little bit <laughs> and the first one wasn't really much we're just like kind of jamming out you know walking out and then, so that was the original that was the origin of yeah the dance the the leaving the nutcracker dance and then it kind of started to develop into this thing where it was like a little bit more choreographed you know other people might get involved and stuff like that and and um we started to use the i started to use the the duke ellington you know nutcracker which i just fell in love with you know so yeah, so, yeah that's, that's a good question what brand of bassoon have you chosen? And that was from Richard too. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I'm so so far right now. I'm using. Um, I'm playing a Fox Two Hundred One, but um, um, I am. I would like to, you know, look at other bassoons. You know, eventually, I'm. I'm interested in in looking at heckles and um, and bells and um but but yeah so that's what that's what i'm playing now i've played that for for a long time since 2001 that particular horn and it's been very good to me with the um cd cd to vocal um so yeah that's that's what i'm playing wonderful <laughs> Thanks for yeah. asking yeah richard says 201 is terrific <laughs> it is. yeah it's a good horn Maya, thank you so much Thank <laughs> you.